got multiple wireless access points in close proximity, then you've got a need to configure radio settings for smooth communication and optimal performance. If multiple WAPs in close proximity are broadcasting at the same frequency or channel, the transmitted data can become corrupted or canceled out. The bad news is that can greatly decrease performance. The good news is it's easy to avoid. Today I'm going to show you how to configure advanced radio settings on the WAP 125 and WAP 581 for optimum wireless capability without worrying about interference and eruptions. Let's get started. First, log into the web-based utility and choose wireless. Then radio from the drop-down menu. Next, select the radio interface you want to configure. In our example today, radio 1, 5 gigahertz is selected. What's the difference between the two? The 2.4 gigahertz frequency is more compatible with older devices since it caters to 802.11b, g, and n modes and has a wider range. The 5 gigahertz frequency caters to 802.11ac and n modes and is faster but has a shorter range. One other thing to note, on the WAP 125, the option to choose the radio is available only when the working mode has been set to dual band. Under the basic settings area, make sure to check the enable radio button. This is enabled by default. Next, navigate to the advanced settings area and click the arrow next to it to expand the page and configure the settings for the chosen radio. It's important to note that DFS support and spectrum analysis mode options will only be available on the WAP 581. Also, the DFS support field is only available if you are configuring radio 1 5 gigahertz. Dynamic frequency selection, DFS, automatically selects channel frequencies with the lowest interference. Use the drop-down list to either enable or disable this feature. In our example, the default is on. If you are configuring radio 2, skip to the next step. If you selected a mode that contains 802.11n in the wireless network mode drop-down in the basic settings area, the short guard interval supported drop-down list will be available. The guard interval is the amount of time that the WAP waits between transmissions, which prevents interference. The guard interval can be shortened to increase throughput by up to 10%. If this option is available, select an option from the drop-down list. Yes reduces transmission time to over 400 nanoseconds when communicating with clients that also support the short guard interval. This is the default option. No keeps transmission time to every 800 nanoseconds. In this example, yes is chosen. Choose an option from the protection drop-down list. The protection feature contains rules to guarantee that 802.11 transmission does not cause interference with legacy stations or application. Auto enables protection when legacy devices are within the range of the WAP. This is the default option. In this example, auto is chosen. In the beacon interval field, enter the interval of milliseconds between beacon frame transmissions. Beacon frames announce the presence of the wireless network. The value must be between 20 and 2000 milliseconds. The default is 100. Cisco recommends keeping the default value. A misconfigured beacon interval can cause clients to be unable to connect. In this example, you guessed it, 100 is used. Next up is the delivery traffic information map period field. Here you will enter an integer from 1 to 255 beacons. The DTIM period indicates how often, in terms of beacon frames, the client served by your WAP should check for buffered data still awaiting pickup. The default value is 2, which specifies that clients will check for buffered data on your WAP on every second beacon frame. In the fragmentation threshold field, enter an even number between 256 and 2346 bytes to specify the size limit for packets transmitted over the network. If a packet exceeds the fragmentation threshold, the fragmentation function is activated and the packet is sent as multiple 802.11 frames. By default, fragmentation is off at a threshold of 2,346 bytes. Changing the fragmentation threshold is not recommended unless you experience radio threshold. In our example, 2,346 is used. In the RTS threshold field, enter an integer between 0 and 2,347 to specify the request to send threshold value. The default here is 2,346. A lower threshold value sends packets more frequently, which results in higher bandwidth consumption and quicker recovery from collisions or interference on the network. 
In this example, 65,535 is used. In the Max Associated Clients field, enter the maximum number of clients that can connect to the WAP at one time. The range is from 0 to 200, with a default setting of 200. In the Transmit Power drop-down list, select the percentage of transmit power the WAP uses when broadcasting. A high percentage is more cost-efficient, since it gives the WAP the widest range and requires fewer access points to cover the same area. A low percentage requires devices to be close to each other, but reduces the overlap and interference among apps. The default is full 100%. In the Frame Burst Support drop-down list, choose either Off or On to disable or enable this feature. Choosing On may increase downstream throughput as it lets the radio quickly send a series of frames in succession for a brief period of time. Next up is the Airtime Fairness Mode drop-down list. This feature allows every client connected to the WAP to have an equal opportunity to take advantage of the network bandwidth, regardless of type, capability, or operating systems. Choose On or Off. In the Maximum Utilization Threshold field, enter the percentage of network bandwidth utilization allowed on the radio before the WAP stops accepting new client association. The range is from 0 to 100%. The default is 0. When it is set to 0, all new associations are allowed, regardless of their utilization rate. In the Fixed Multicast Rate drop-down list, select the transmission rate in megabits per second for broadcast and multicast packets. The range of possible values is determined by the radio mode in the basic settings area. Selecting Auto lets the WAP automatically choose the best rate based on the connected clients. Today, we are choosing Auto. In the Legacy Rate Sets table, check the boxes under the available rates to determine the supported and basic rate sets. Supported is just how it sounds. It indicates rates that the WAP supports. Basic rate sets are what the WAP advertises to the network to set up communication with other devices. It is more efficient to have a WAP broadcast a subset of its support rates. The rates are in megabits per second. Remember, in order to select a rate as basic, it must also be selected as supported. Check the Broadcast Multicast Rate Limiting checkbox if you want to limit the number of packets transmitted across the network. By default, this feature is disabled. If you enable Broadcast Multicast Rate Limiting, the Rate Limit and Rate Limit Burst fields will become available. Enter the appropriate values for each field. Rate Limit is for multicast and broadcast traffic. The rate is expressed in packets per second and the range is 1 through 50. The default is 50. Rate Limit Burst indicates the amount of traffic that is allowed to pass as a temporary burst, even if it exceeds the above maximum rate. The range is 1 through 75, and the default is 75. In the Spectrum Analysis Mode drop-down list, choose a mode in which the WAP will conduct an analysis of the wireless environment. Options include Dedicated Spectrum Analyzer, where the radio is used for spectrum analysis for more than 10% of the time, and the client connections may work but are not guaranteed. Hybrid Spectrum Analyzer, where client connections are guaranteed, but degradation is expected throughout. 3 plus 1 Spectrum Analyzer, where clients connect to 3x3 three three chains while the spectrum analysis is done on a 1x1 one one chain, and Disable, which is the default mode. Remember, Spectrum Analysis Mode is only available on the WAP 581. Here we've chosen the default mode of Disable. If necessary, check the Very High Throughput or VHT Features checkbox to enable the Broadcom-specific extension for Broadcom to Broadcom links. Click the blue Configure T-Spec button to open the fields and configure T-Spec settings. First, enter the T-Spec violation interval in seconds for the WAP to report associated clients that do not adhere to mandatory admission control procedures. This reporting occurs through the system log and simple network management protocol traps, otherwise known as SNMP. The range is from 0 to 900 with a default of 300. In the T-Spec mode drop-down list, Choose the Traffic Specification Mode for the WAP. This is sent from a quality of service capable client requesting a certain amount of traffic from the WAP. Choose On to enable T-Spec and allow the WAP to handle traffic from quality of service devices. Choose Off to disable T-Spec and quality of service devices are not given priority. In the T-Spec Voice ACM Mode drop-down list, choose a mode that regulates Mandatory Admission Control, or ACM, for the Voice Access category. Choose On to require that a station send a T-Spec request for bandwidth to the WAP before sending or receiving a voice traffic stream. 
choose off to allow stations to send and receive voice traffic without a T-Spec request. This allows the WAP to control bandwidth usage for voice traffic. In this example, off is chosen. In the T-Spec voice ACM limit field, enter the maximum amount of traffic the WAP tries to transmit through wireless with a voice AC to gain access. The range is 0 to 70% and the default is 20%. In the T-Spec Video ACM mode drop-down list, choose a mode that regulates Mandatory Admission Control, or ACM, for the Video Access category. Choose On to require that a station send a T-Spec request for bandwidth to the WAP before sending or receiving a video traffic stream. Choose Off to allow stations to send and receive video traffic without a T-Spec request. As in the Voice Traffic section, this allows the WAP to have control over bandwidth usage for video traffic. In this example, off is chosen. Next up is the T-Spec video ACM limit field. Here, enter the maximum amount of traffic the WAP tries to transmit through wireless with a video AC to gain access. The range is from 0 to 70% and the default is at 15%. In the T-Spec AP inactivity timeout field, enter the number of seconds for a WAP to detect a downlink traffic specification as idle before deleting it. The range is 0 to 120 seconds, and the default is 30. Entering 0 disables this feature. In the T-Spec Station Inactivity Timeout field, enter the number of seconds for a WAP to detect an uplink traffic specification as idle before deleting it. The range is 0 to 120 seconds, and the default is 30. Entering 0 disables this feature. In the T-Spec Legacy WMM QMAP mode drop-down list, select whether to enable or disable the intermixing of legacy traffic on queues operating as ACM. By default, this feature is disabled. Click OK to save your changes. Click Save. A pop-up window will appear telling you that wireless connections may be disconnected upon saving the changes you made in your wireless settings. Click OK to continue. Congratulations! You have now successfully configured the advanced radio settings on the WAP 125 and WAP 581. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.